It's The Wake Up Call with Ed and Paul, the podcast about stories in business and in life with your hosts, Ed Fox and Paul Odendahl. G'day, viewers and listeners. We're back. Yeah, you can't get rid of us that easy. Once you subscribe to us, which you should all do, uh, we're going to keep popping up sort of like a bad smell. Uh, it's Paul Odendahl and Ed Fox with the wake-up call from uh, with Ed and Paul. Um, this is, you know, we called it the wake-up call. We were just going to do like five minutes of skits, but then we start getting great guests that we have great conversations with and five minutes don't cut it. So we're here with a uh, an interesting individual that Paul knows. Paul, why don't you introduce our guest, Michael? Well, Michael Esposito has his own podcast that he does on a weekly basis on iHeartRadio. That's just part of Michael Esposito. Michael Esposito lives on LinkedIn. If any of the viewers are on LinkedIn, you'll see Michael Esposito motivating you on a daily basis on LinkedIn. Michael Esposito has his own insurance agency now. And I see he's got his t-shirt on today, Denton, and he'll probably tell us how that name came about. So I had the privilege, the blessing to share with Michael Esposito some of my insurance experience prior to him opening his agency. Michael Esposito, Ed. Wow, a lot about I'm Michael Esposito I'm looking him up on today. LinkedIn right now. Yeah, I mean, look connect. this guy up. He's a hero of mine. Michael Esposito, Ed, was the first person, well, actually, my friend where I broke my arm, was the second person who came, dropped everything and came running to the hospital to visit me the day I severely broke my arm. Just like you dropped everything when you broke your arm. Yeah, I dropped everything, all right. So I, I yeah, remember that he, day vividly. Yeah, he came rushing to the hospital to see me. What a blessing. And Michael Esposito is an amazing husband and father of some beautiful little young girls that he is bringing up and helping under oh the picture of that arm yeah folks like if you if you want to see what paul did to his arm he did it right anyway paul um all right that's enough about michael esposito let's get get another person on here oh he's gonna get a really big head here let's uh let's just get back to hey michael that's a pretty good bloody introduction there mate um tell us a little bit about yourself that didn't include the stuff that or you can include the stuff Please so who is the Michael arm. Esposito? Oh. Sure. Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me on uh, today. It's it's always amazing to be able to jump on someone's podcast and be able to share our story. So um, I really appreciate this space. Uh, a little bit about me. Uh, well, I, I started my insurance journey about six years ago uh, with Allstate. Yeah, with Allstate, where, where many, many insurance agents start. And I think it's because they provide such a really great comprehensive training and they make it really easy for you to get licensed, which I think is, uh, you know, the biggest hurdle that so many uh, wannabe insurance agents have is to get licensed. And thankfully, uh, Mr. Odendahl here can help you do that. He's my go to guy whenever I bring on a new team member. So, yeah, so I so would I- say so I guess that uh, means you were in good hands. <laughs> that's right that's right i was not fortunate enough to know paul back when i was oh. licensed i met him later on in life but yeah so i got licensed about six years ago and uh, started my journey in insurance i i knew very early on and, and it was the reason why i got licensed actually that i wanted to open up my insurance agency the first thing that i wanted to do was actually learn the business first the insurance side of the business and then start getting to, you know getting to you know some some uh start getting my way learning my way in the insurance world um and then finally when i did that was when i quit a six figure job to open up den 10 insurance services and den 10 insurance services is named after my daughters denise and tenley that's why the t is always capitalized Uh, So it's very, very important. And the idea behind the name was to create a a name that one was kind of trendy at the time when you think about TikToks and all the different things was to create a name that was trendy and to create a name that meant something to me and that would be a legacy. And so when I think about my daughters, they inspire me every day to to give my, my best 
to Denton. And so that's where the name came out of. So that's a little bit about my Denton journey real quick. Plus, I think by naming the business after your daughters and giving them that credit, there's less chance when you get to Paul's age and as I'm getting up there, you know, that uh, they're going to put us in a nursing home, you know, like they're going to take care of us because you, you they're going to take care of you because you've uh, given them credit. I think keep on their good side. That's always good. Paul's you know? age, Paul's age. Paul, really? You're going to play that card? Paul's age. We were just on a call about Paul's age. You had two polls on a call about Paul's age. Yeah, just add those well, ages For the viewers, the, the people that know me, I'm only four. What is wrong with being four? Yeah, well, yes. It, we will it, We will dig into that sometime with no guests. Paul and I will just go at each other really hard, and we'll see how that works out. Uh, so, Michael, so you uh, six years in the insurance industry. Uh, are you an independent insurance agent right now with your, with your brokerage? Yeah. Or whatever the, you... What what I learned by starting with Allstate was that I didn't want to be what's called a captive yeah. agent, selling only one insurance carrier. I learned that very quickly that I wanted to be able to be an independent, to your question there, independent insurance agent. And that being said, I did join SIAA, which you see here in the background, which is, and more specifically, Sand Group, in order for me to have carrier access. What was important for me was that I can give options to my clients. Uh, what I learned when I was at Allstate, uh, I didn't like having my hands tied. And I learned very quickly that clients don't like that either. When you can't find a better better coverage at the right price for them, uh, they're not happy and they start shopping. And so what I wanted to be able to do was offer as many options as possible for all of my clients. And it goes into one of our core values, which is transparency. Uh, transparency means so many things. All of our core values mean mul a multitude of things. But when I think about transparency, I think about being able to go out to the market, get multiple options for my clients and share that with them so that they can make an educated choice on their own, which then gives them some control of what they're, how they're insuring themselves. And they're much happier in that way. Yeah, that makes good sense. You know, but You've given me the perfect lead into my favorite dad joke this week. You know, I used to identify, I was born visible, but I identify as invisible. I guess you could consider me transparent. There you go. Boom, there boom. you go. That's, I, I check with my that friends. Runs. That's totally okay. Do not cancel me because of that joke, Paul. I'm just telling you, do not cancel me. So, but Michael, it is so true. I think, I think when we look at anything that has a captive nature to it, whether it's, Edward Jones Investments or it's Allstate or any of the other captive uh, agencies is they can provide a good product that will fit a lot of people, but they can't provide everything to everyone. And I think being an independent agent allows you to dig in and, and really help your clients in a way that you can't in a captive in a captive agency. And, and that's what I, when I talk to my insurance friends and I'm not in the insurance field, um, but when I talk to my friends that are agents, we meet a lot of them through different networking groups and B&I groups and stuff. And it's pretty much a common theme that the independent agents just have access to a lot more, uh, a lot more carriers. And I'll add, to that. oh, and I just, just to add to that real quick, it's also, it also helps for our team. So <clears throat> in terms of our salespeople, it gives them options. So what's, in terms of sales, it's really important that we're very clear as to who we're targeting and who we want to work with, because when you're kind of like a jack of all trades and just shooting things at the wall, then, you know, you're kind of going with whatever sticks. So it's important that we know who we're targeting. So we do have a target demographic that we can help. Right. But then on the other side of that, we can attract team members that maybe don't want to target that demographic and they want to go to a different demographic. And because we have so many carriers and we have such carrier access, we can hire that team member and they can go after that one. Whereas to your point of, let's say, the captive agents of the world, the captive agency or carrier is telling you who you can hire and who you're going to go after because that's all they, that's all they offer. You were going to say, Paul? Yeah, you know, it's what I was going to say. First of all, I'm very proud of this young man. And... Do you notice 
that Michael, that he's starting to learn about insurance. My little co-host is becoming a little baby disciple. I'm so proud of him too. So he's starting to learn about insurance, but I want to shift from insurance for a little bit because oh. I am insurance and I listen to insurance all day long. And again, I'm proud of this guy. And clearly he's all about helping people. And he understands what I have right here on my desk. When you work to improve the lives of others, your life improves automatically, which leads me into there's much more to Michael Esposito. Do I have to go through this in, this beginning again introduction about Michael Esposito? No, let's. I want to hear okay. about here. I want to hear about this is my this is the Michael Esposito, the insurance part. I'm very proud of Michael Esposito, the community. Michael Esposito, what he's been doing in the community. Michael Esposito, once we get through a few minutes of the community, what Michael Esposito is doing specifically to help individuals with his new service. Michael Esposito. Sure. Uh, I'm not sure exactly which parts you're talking about, but I can speak to, to most of them. Uh, so the first thing is Den 10. Uh, when I first founded Den 10, it was, with the fa- it was built on the, the idea of giving back. And uh, that's because that stems from my parents and what they instilled in my siblings and myself in giving back and starting a non-for-profit back in 1993 called Forgotten Children of Haiti, which is uh, certainly because of our heritage, my mother's Haitian. So with Forgotten Children of Haiti, I was too young to be a part of that whole formation. But as I got older and when I was founding Denten, it was very important for me to bring that in. When I brought that in, long story short, I learned that there was many other non-for-profits in our area, other uh, organizations in our area that also need help. And so they just came into the fold of Denton. So I'm very proud to say that we had committed to giving away 1% of our uh, profits to, well, not even profits, of our revenue, period. Like it's because we're, 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 still, we're still a growing company. We're not even profitable yet. So it's really of our revenue. So we had we had committed to giving away 1% of our revenue to nonprofits. And I'm very proud to say that we gave away over 2% of our revenue last year to nonprofits. And it is a commitment of mine to give away 1% and to continuously help nonprofits and organizations in our area, as well as just donate on a regular basis, not just money, but also time. And I think that that's where we go into the community aspect of things, Paul, in that it's sometimes easy to cut a check. Uh, I'd like it to be a lot easier, to be honest. Uh, but so it's easy to cut a check. Uh, the, the hard work comes in, in in the volunteer. The hard work comes in in, in giving our time to others. And Denten does that by putting on events called our Take Action events, which is um, uh, Take Action is powered by Denten, which are events where we have panelists come in and uh, they speak on high level topics in terms of starting a business, entrepreneurship, giving back, collaborating. Paul's been to many of those events, took copious notes while he was there, networked and all the rest. And that's just done for our community so that people can come together, can can network with each other, but can also learn. And uh, I'm very excited to share that I'm working with a local college on bringing Take Action to their campus and to offer that to students for free uh, and working with uh, organizations, uh, perhaps on sponsorship in order so that we can keep it going the way that we've been doing and just leveling it up that we're always looking to scale that. Uh, then the other things that I do and that we do, um, that I, I guess that I do is, is be a part of our community in different ways of service in terms of uh, serving on boards, whether it's in Toastmasters or chambers or business associations. And I think that it's very important that we acknowledge all of our board members and all of the people that serve on these boards because they give a lot of their time. And I know this firsthand. We give a lot of our time to that organization and it doesn't necessarily lead to sales. So I wanna make sure that people that are watching and listening understand that a person that serves on a board is not doing it to line their pockets. They really are doing it for the good of the community and the good of the organization. And when we say the good of the organization, that's you. That's the people that are part of that organization. Because a lot of the time that they spend serving on that board, a lot of the time that they spend giving their time, they do not get back in terms of sales. So uh, we, we do a, I do a lot in terms of that. Um, and then I'll, I'll cap with this because this is something that um, 
uh, been really excited and, and been doing every single day now going into probably over 100 days now straight of my IG live. So I go on Instagram live every single day uh, and, I, and I share an inspirational message, a motivational message. I share stories of what I'm experiencing. I bring on guests and you're both, of course, welcome to jump on. I bring on guests to share their stories and what they're doing as well. And uh, I'll stop there uh, and, and uh, leave some time for some questions. <laughs> Sorry. You got a question there, uh, co-host, before I ask him an additional you know, uh, comment about his leadership program? You know how I am. I have 400 questions. that. All right. Fire away. Today. Fire no, no, away. No, no. You, you go That's a it. big plus that you have questions. Oh, wait a you minute. Know, what about? He gives me this lead in, Michael. We've, we've done this joke to death, but we're going to keep doing it. You know, I don't know anything about a lot of things. I don't know anything about uh, Switzerland, but I do this know its flag's true. a big plus. There you go. That's what he was looking for there. Uh, I'm wearing my American flag shirt today, as is Paul. This has become my uniform for the wake up call with Ed and Paul. Uh, Michael, I love that you're passionate about the things that you're doing. What what is one of the challenge? What is one of the biggest challenges you're facing that Paul and I might have some ideas that might be helpful to you with? Sure. Staffing is the biggest issue that we face, and it's something that everyone faces. Right. And so, you know, Paul, you you brought up my leadership course, and so I'll speak to that here, in that staffing is the biggest issue. Um, but what I'm learning is that at Den 10, what, I, what we do differently is that I offer coaching to my team members. And that's very valuable to them. They've come back to me and said that to me is that, you know, I've, I've done sessions on time blocking and my, my, my admin team comes back to me and goes, I started doing some of the things that you mentioned, Michael, and, and it's helped my productivity in my day. Uh, on Monday, we, we did a session on journaling. And one of my team members came back to me and said, Michael, journaling, you know, it's something I used to do and I need to get back into. And I did some and it was really great, the exercise that you had us do. And I'm onboarding right now two new team members. And one of them, uh, yeah, it's awesome. One of them uh, lives close by to me. And, and it's really cool because we actually get to go for walks. And she's probably shocked by this when she texted me the other day because she was overwhelmed and stressed and said, you know, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to do this. And I said, well, listen, what are you doing at two o'clock? And she said, what do, you, what do you mean? What do we need to do? And typically when a boss reaches out to someone who's working on a case, they think he's gonna get it, dig into me and everything. And uh, so she was preparing for that. And I said, well, why don't you meet me at the walkway? And why don't we take a walk? And we had a really beautiful walk across the walkway bridge. And in that, in that walk, we had a conversation about her goals, where she's at, what she wants to accomplish, what she wants to do. And it's like funny because as we got to the end of one side of the bridge and she went over her whole story, on the way back, I started giving her some of my feedback on all of that. And we went through some sales training and we went through some ideas and we went through some goal setting and we came back with a really firm plan together. And she kind of looked at me at the end of it and was like, that was really cool. And so I believe that when I, when I think about the hurdle of staffing, if I can share that with more people, that at Den 10, how we do things so much differently and how my goal as an as a owner and as a boss is only to empower and lift my employees then I believe that we can attract more. So I think my biggest hurdle, to be honest, is that I'm just not in front of enough people that um, that want to come work at Denton or that have an opportunity to leave their job and come work here. Could you use them in Nashville there, right? Uh, I'm not I'm not giving them up here in Hutts Valley. No, that's could you fair use enough. them in Nashville? And I could attest to what he just spoke about because that person shared with me what an amazing walk it was. As so, she continues to work with me in her licensing. Is your uh, Michael? Is your podcast video and audio? So yeah, so you're speaking to the Michael Esposito show, which yep. streams on all platforms. Uh, we record at the iHeart Studios in Poughkeepsie. It's a it's an awesome opportunity to be able to record in a professional studio. Right. It blows people away when when they see it. Uh, but to your question, there it's audio first. So the audio quality is super important. We do record video, so video is always recorded in the studio, but I have not posted much of it yet. So some, okay. there's a few episodes that are posted on my YouTube channel, Michael Esposito Inc. on YouTube. You can find them all there, but uh, I don't like to say that or commit to them being on video quite yet. 
Okay. Well, I do love video as, as we can attest to. Um, the, the reason I asked for that is if you have the capacity to record, and you might have already done this, a culture statement, talking about your company culture. So one of the things when I went through with my business coach was she said, look, I love your the way you talk about company culture. I love the way you act with company culture, but nobody knows what your company culture is. Take a minute, bring up Zoom, sit there in your chair and really just have a conversation with somebody sitting through the screen, watching your company culture video. And it's as long as it needs to be talking about what your company culture is, not just espousing vision statements and mission statements. But I can already tell just from talking to you, Michael, that your culture statement is how can I add value to my employees? How can I add value to my team members? How can I add value to my clients? How can I add value in my community? Right. And I think I think that would come through in a in a culture statement. I think the culture statement is way more important than a mission statement or a vision statement. Because I want to understand who am I coming to work with? Am I coming to work for or am I coming to work with? Right. Do we espouse that family comes first? but not really follow through on that. You know, so that that's the one piece of advice I can give. If you don't have a recorded culture statement that everybody can find, I would say that that would be a great start to retaining and acquiring great people. Hmm. Yeah. I actually made a note of it because I, I really like that. And it's, it's something that I talk about in my IG lives, like my Instagram lives. Uh, we do go, talk about culture every now and then, but to your point, something that people can look up and find. And so I so I, I got my trusty notebook here. I make notes. Make look at that. I, I want to add value to you too. Paul, you. away to you. You've got questions for Michael? Um, you know, we didn't hear much about challenges. We hear about all of Michael's successes. We did hear about the challenge of finding an employee. That's a challenge I hear about on a daily basis from coast to coast. So as a person who licensed people in the insurance industry, I constantly have agencies coming to me looking for help. You know, Besides could, the challenge of employees, what other challenges have you been experiencing in this new uh, agency startup? Michael? Yeah, well, you know, I'll speak to your question in your intake form of, uh, of my biggest, uh, I think it was something like my, what's my, my favorite or biggest accomplishment. And I think in my biggest accomplishment is my biggest challenge. And that's why I want to bring the two together. Uh, so speaking to that real quick. So as I said, I, I quit a six-figure job in order to start Den 10. And that, I believe, is my biggest accomplishment achievement thus far in uh, starting a business, in learning all of the different intricacies of starting a business. And now we get into the challenges. Um, I, thought the chal I thought the challenge was not receiving an income from a, from a, from a job. Honestly, I've learned that that's that's not the challenge at all. If you're if you're able to set your mind to entrepreneurship and starting a business, and then leaving the job is actually what I when I look back at it, that's probably the easiest thing I did. Uh, the hardest things that I see is, or the biggest challenge that I see is what I what I would think is, I'll call it perseverance right now, in mm. that seeing revenue numbers seeing sales numbers, seeing a hard market, seeing uh, interest rates in, and how that affects my loan that I have to pay back. Uh, all of that um, not being where I want them to be. So when I speak about revenue, it's, it's not where I had uh, planned for. When I speak about sales, not where I had planned for. When I think about, again, go to the interest rates on my loan where that has changed, uh, it's not where I had planned for. And so when I see all these things, uh, there, there, there was a, a major challenge that I had personally and for Denton probably about six or seven months ago, where it was just like my back felt like I was against the wall. I felt like I was against the wall. I felt like my options had gone completely away from me and that I would either have to sell or, or get rid of the business or something else, right? Something much worse. And so I felt like my back was against the wall and I'm speaking to all of these advisors and trying to get some kind of grasp on, on what to do and what's next and how to, how to, I guess, button up my business and sell it because I got no options. 
And I, what I learned through that process, that challenge is perseverance. I learned that if I just continue trying a little bit more, if I, if I share with my team, which is what I ended up doing, and, and I'm going to share a phone call that I received from a team member in a second. If I share with my team, my challenge that I'm experiencing, they're going to show up a little bit more. And as I started doing that, as I started reaching out to people and, and shifting the conversation from my backs against the wall to here's where I'm at and here's where I'd like to be. Can you help me get there? People started coming out and started helping and started showing me different alternate ways to get my back off the wall, which was really great. And uh, eventually, here we are several months later, and uh, we're working on different ideas and we're continuously growing. And as I said, I'm onboarding two new team members and we're continuously changing. But I would say the biggest challenge is finding that perseverance, finding that, that thought of I can do it. That was probably the biggest challenge. But once I found it, it was like, all right, I know that if I can get through that hard time, then I can get through anything and I'll find a way. And I want to share this phone call was when I had my back against the wall, I declared to the team, I said, hey, listen, team, here's what's going on with our agency. I think we're going to probably sell because we got no options. And I got a call from a team member the next morning. Um, and, and you know him very well, Jim, uh, uh, Paul. And uh, he said, to, it was Jim. And he said to me, uh, Michael, you, you can't do it. And I said, what do you mean? He goes, he goes, I believe way too much in your vision for helping others. He was speaking to when I talked about Denton and how we give back. He said, I believe too much in your vision of helping others for you to let go of this too soon. He goes, I don't want to work for anybody else. I don't want to go with another company where any or leave this and take another job or whatever it is. He goes, I want to see your mission through of helping others. And you just tell me what I need to do in order to make that work. And I will find a way. And uh, I said, all right, Jim, thanks for the call. I'll call you back in a couple of minutes after I think about it. And I think it took me about half an hour to kind of get my brain right. And I called him back and I said, all right, game on. Let's do it. You know, let's figure it out. I think I think there's a lot to unpack. We could spend two hours unpacking just that little passage of the podcast. But a couple of things I want to hit on. We say a statement we, we have this quote, many hands make light work. Okay, we've, we've all said it, we've all heard it over the years, but we don't actually know how to implement that, right? Because it's hard to ask for help. But I think about, I got a semi-trailer of cricket sets one time out to the house and I'd organized for the guy across the street to bring his forklift and to help me unload it. Sometimes the guys that run the truck will help you unload. But this time the forklift guy didn't show up. The guy sat in his truck playing on his phone. I'm up there trying to throw cases of cricket sets out and I'm doing it by myself. And I'm like, he's like, you got 30 minutes. And I'm like, not even a third of the way through. I get on the phone. I text everybody that's around me saying, hey, I really need some help to unload this truck. We weren't able to get a forklift. I'm having to unload it by hand. I'm just tossing all these things out on the ground. If anybody can run over and just give me 10 minutes, five minutes, 15 minutes, I don't care what. Seven people showed up uh, from kids to adults, moms to dads, unlo help me unload the truck. People want to help you with your mission, which is exactly what you said, right? So many hands do make light work, but we've got to ask for the help. And if we're not willing to ask for the help. The other thing I, I think that's important there is you showed your culture statement. The guy that called you said, hey, your culture, what you're trying to build, I believe in what your mission is, what your culture statement is. I don't want to work for anybody else. That's the statement. That's how you hire more people. You have him put that out there and say, this is why you don't want to work for anybody else. This is the guy. So I, I think just those couple of things right there shows that there's all this information that we can dig in and dissect and use in our own lives. Um, and, and I think that's a great story, Michael. Thanks for sharing. Well, cool, thanks. Paul, you, you got know, anything? Yeah, I'm touched as always. Well. The, uh, no, I didn't say touched into mind, my co-host friend. Um, 
listening to Michael's story, going to Michael's events, meeting Michael, uh, connecting him with Jim. I was sold on his mission statement, sitting in the restaurant, having dinner with him and his brother, talking about his family, just getting to know him. Sold on what he was trying to accomplish after I've spent 41 years in this career. I listened to this, and I hope the listeners hear part of that perseverance and back against the wall um, to keep you moving to what your passion and vision is, is collaboration and inspiration. And that's really where success is. It's not in competition. I say this all the time. It's not in competition. It's in collaboration. And it's an in inspiration. And Michael brings both. Michael what? brings both to Michael Esposito. He brings it to his events. He brings it to the culture and his business. People bring it back to him. Collaboration is the new competition. That, that's what it is. Collaboration does help. The rising tide does lift all boats. This scarcity mindset that I have to fight my competitor for business. There's plenty of business out there. There's plenty of people out there that need help. Collaborating is going to get you more. So, Michael, how would people find you? How would they find your podcast? How would they find out more about your, uh, your coaching and your nonprofit and all of that sort of stuff? Sure. Uh Best way to find me, as you said early in the show, was my uh, LinkedIn profile. Uh, I'm very active on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram. Uh, so LinkedIn has links to everything to, to find me. Of course, uh, we're speaking about Den 10 here. Uh, Den 10's website is, is in your show notes, but it's den10.io. And uh, that's because my vision for Denton is that we are a technology company selling insurance. We're not there yet, right? But, but eventually, so Denton.io. And then uh, I would just say, find me on LinkedIn. But if you really want to get to know me, if you really want to get to know Denton, get to know Michael Esposito Inc., learn more about my 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 network of people like Paul, like yourself, and collaborate with me then go to my Instagram channel, which is Michael Esposito Inc. Go to my Instagram channel, Michael Esposito Inc. So follow me on Instagram. That's the best way to learn more about me, learn more about Denton, learn more about everything that we do at Denton, but also Michael Esposito Inc. You also get to meet my network of amazing people like Paul, like yourself. All are a part of that. And everybody can take take part in my Instagram lives. I respond to every comment during a live show and I do allow people to come on on video and, and partake in the live uh, show with me. So Instagram live is Michael Esposito Inc. on Instagram. I have plenty of reels out there. I've been doing it now for well over a hundred days straight and I do it on weekends as well, for, uh, Saturdays and Sundays. So I'm there every single day and you can learn a lot more about me and everything that we're doing in our community there. Awesome, Michael. Hey, thanks for coming on the show. And Paul, thanks for inviting uh, high quality guests. I really appreciate that. Blessing. Blessing, blessing, blessing. And no, he's not coming to Nashville. We're keeping him here in the <laughs> Hudson Valley. Well, that's okay. We can still work with each other from. A yes, thanks to the virtual world. Yes, yeah. we need to have him on again. I'd like to hear the story about how him and I met. That's an interesting story. It's a very interesting story. It's a very interesting story. Okay, that sounds like a lead into episode uh, part B of this. Uh, yeah, I, I would love to share that story. Awesome, awesome. Hey, thanks so much, Michael, for being on the show. Thank you, guys. Talk to you soon. Have a great day. Thanks. Well, that's it for this edition of the Wake Up Call with Ed and Paul. Thanks for listening. As always, we appreciate it. And if you'd like to subscribe, you can do that on your favorite podcast platform or YouTube. Thanks a lot and have a great day.